Hello, my name is Ashley Fisher, and I am with the U.S. Army Medical Research and Material Command's Telemedicine and Advanced Technology Research Center in Fort Detrick, Maryland. I appreciate the opportunity to present to you today, even though I could not be there in person. Today I'll be presenting on the topic of virtual world telerehabilitation for the traumatically injured. First, I'd like to explain to you a little bit about the Advanced Virtual Environment Support Space from its inception to where we are now. You will see how AVES moved from a virtual world peer support group to something that also has involved physical rehabilitation and is now serving as a research and development test bed for many different clinical needs. Embedded in that discussion, we will overview significant findings from the phases thus far and also discuss some of the future directions and research opportunities for AVES. The combat operations in OEF, OIF are one of the longest and largest sustained combat operations since the Vietnam War. Since 2001, approximately 1.64 million troops have served in OEF, OIF, and with that increase in the number of deployments and frequency of exposure to traumatic events has increased the probability of a service member experiencing a combat-related injury or disorder, such as post-traumatic stress disorder or traumatic brain injury. As of December 2012, there were over 1,500 warfighters with major amputations as a result of operations in OEF, OIF, and Operation New Dawn across the services. We know that all of these conditions, PTSD, TBI, the suffering of a limb loss, or physical injury, contribute to a reduction in the health-related quality of life, impaired psychosocial well-being, occupational functioning, and overall well-being. The proof of concept population that we decided to start with for AVES was the amputee population. Military amputees are a unique patient population that have many factors that need to be considered for successful recovery, both physically and psychosocially. A review of the literature suggests that peer support is a salient factor in the recovery of our military amputees. Peer support has led to feelings of increased empowerment, self-efficacy, and better outcomes in the quality of life for those involved. When a service member is undergoing rehabilitation after an amputation in a military treatment facility, they are surrounded by their peers who are often undergoing the same challenges as them. Service members can spend upwards of a year in the military treatment facilities, embedded in the discussions with their peers and involved in the peer support environment. However, once they return home, many service members are isolated in their remote communities and no longer have access to these ready peer support communities since they often occur face to face at the MTFs and VA medical centers. This slide shows the distribution of OEF OIF veterans relative to a VA medical center and military hospital location. There are many counties that you can see here where members that are isolated hundreds of miles away from the nearest MTF or VA facility and therefore may not be able to participate in those peer support activities. This led us to the original goal of AVES, which is to provide patients and their families access to a virtual support group environment that will enable them to have access to a critical resource which they may not have been able to be a part of in the physical world due to physical or geographic barriers. This slide shows our progress to date on AVES so far. We've so far had a phase one and two. This was an intramurally funded effort through the Army Medical Department's Advanced Medical Technology Initiative with Mr. Troy Turner and myself serving as co-investigators. The focus of phase one and two was to select a company to do the actual build in the virtual environment based on our parameters. And the initial platform that was selected was Second Life, which is owned by Linden Lab. One of the main deliverables of this effort was assembling an advisory board committee of amputee, military amputees, their spouses, amputee athletes, as well as peer support leaders uh, to determine the core capabilities needed to be included in this environment. You'll see here a view of several images of the Second Life AVES environment. The first shows the view of the AVES Lodge. The main lodge is a gathering place with formal and informal information provision. It includes static posters, live links to selected websites, and also provides areas for informal gathering and peer support areas. The second area is one of our most important areas. It's called the sandbox area. The sandbox is for user content and development. Residents can learn to build script in the sandbox, and building instructions and free components are included. 
We really feel that this will allow users to be able to make their own mark on the environment, personalize it, customize it, and hopefully get them engaged in the environment so they actually want to use it. Figures three and four show some of the AVEST meeting spaces that are available. These meeting spaces include various options for group or more private meetings. Each meeting space is a privacy uh, protected by a parcel so that the passers-by cannot hear the information exchanges unless they are invited to participate in the conversation. So for example, you are represented by an avatar. You may be walking by a discussion that is occurring in a certain area. You can see the avatars there, but you wouldn't be able to hear them unless you had the password. We think this is extremely important in this population because there might be some sensitive information that is discussed and we want them to feel like they are able to do that in a comfortable manner. One of the main deliverables of the AVES Phase 1 and 2 was coming up with what core capabilities needed to be embedded in the AVES environment. Some of those included controlled access, so the ability to authenticate the users and have full administrative control of who is accessing the environment. The expansion capability, the need for the environment to grow in time. Multi-location access for users to be able to access AVIS regardless of what laptop or where they are as long as they have a broadband connection. Real-time communication both through text chat and also through voice-to-voice -voice communication through a headset. Multiple in-world and geographical settings and avatar movement, so the ability to move around and navigate in the environment easily. The private patient group treatment areas, very important. The public interaction areas, again, one of the main focuses was the peer support, so we needed to have many of these environments able for them to communicate openly. Avatar customization, again, allowing the user to feel like they are making their own mark in the environment and feeling akin to their avatar so that they are more likely to want to engage in the environment. The ability for scene session replay. And this is something that needs to be done with consideration of the user. You can see how this would be helpful in a clinical setting for clinicians to hear back or maybe mine some of the text that is discussed, but we need to make sure that there is full and open disclosure as to what would be possibly recorded and what would be completely private, but again, an important capability to have. Also, the ability to use adaptive hardware. We are working with a patient population that may not have arms, they may not have, have hands, and we want to make sure that we are able to provide them with the tools they need to navigate successfully in the, the, in the environment. And we actually do have tools available, such as gesture movement and moving through the environment using head movement. And also, again, the user-generated content, extremely important. Next, I'd like to discuss some of our current directions with AVIS. Uh, one of the first things that we're doing is working with Physical Optics Corporation out of Torrance, California. And they are responding to a small business innovative research topic in which we hope to improve the nonverbal communication in the virtual world, create innovative ways to immerse the user in the environment to encourage participation in the virtual world, and develop tools in the virtual world that support physical therapy, which is an important component of caring for the combat am amputee. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the recovery of an amputee involves both the psychosocial recovery as well as the physical recovery. We've already had in phase one and two a successful imp implementation of an environment that shows the peer support, but we now wanna move more towards incorporating the physical therapy as well, which is also extremely important. So Physical Optics Corporation responded to that topic successfully, and they are tackling it by leveraging inexpensive sensors, such as a web camera, Microsoft Connect sensor, and a haptic belt to develop a solution for including physical therapy support in a virtual environment. They are also working on the following core capabilities. The first is face-to-avatar morphing. And this technology allows the user to have a selectable level of privacy. What they would do is upload an image of themselves, select an avatar that they would like to be morphed with, and then anywhere on that continuum they can select how much they want to look like themselves and how much they want to look like their avatar. The face expression to avatar morphing allows the user's face to be mapped onto the avatar so that they can engage in those important nonverbal communication cues. This is helpful in peer support environments, but also in physical therapy, since a physical therapist could clearly see how taxing an exercise was on a user. 
the body to avatar morphing through the connect system, allowing them to move their limbs and have it be translated onto the avatar. And the haptic belt technology will enable tactile feedback and provide a new, to new tool for therapist interaction by gathering heart rate information and providing tactile feedback from the therapist. This slide shows the relation between their core technologies, the hardware used in the system, and the benefits provided. A validation study is also included as part of their phase two, since what we're really aiming to do is provide a validated tool and system that could be incorporated into the AVES environment as a module. The next goal of AVES is to leverage the lessons learned from the initial proof of concept environment and to reconstruct the environment in the Open Simulator platform, which is a free open source platform for hosting virtual worlds. It is intended that the AVES OpenSim platform will be built on and integrated with the early stage platform currently being developed by the Telemedicine and Advanced Technology Research Center. The ESP is a state-of-the-art, high-performance software development test and evaluation laboratory for advanced health information technology research and development. The laboratory supports test versions of Accentris and Alta, which are the military inpatient and outpatient e-health records, which will provide access to synthetic patient files available for use by research and development projects. By building upon this platform, we will be able to demonstrate with the AVIS modules how clinical information will flow from the virtual module to the clinical records in a meaningful way for providers. Somewhat concurrently, we also aim to utilize the AVES platform to develop and test the feasibility of a clinical tool for assessing and rehabilitating cognitive function in veterans with mild traumatic brain injury. Specifically, we will be working with a military occupational therapist to develop, integrate, and test a virtual reality application to support the rehabilitation of service members with TBI through an interactive simulation in the AVES environment, such as a shopping mall simulator, so testing those cognitive skills and tasks within the virtual world. The main goal of Objective 2 will be to demonstrate how the information collected in this clinical module could be developed and captured with the virtual environment and then transmitted to the appropriate electronic health record. Again, that's why it's important to integrate, integrate with the Accentris and Alta data. The Advanced Virtual Environment Support Space, formerly known as the Amputee Virtual Environment Support Space, is something that has grown in scope over time since its inception. There are two future directions that I would like you to walk away with today from this presentation. One, the AVIS environment provides a unique opportunity for research, evaluations, and collaborations on both the physical and psychological health spectrum. And among all patient populations, the AVIS environment provides a platform for information dissemination, peer support, and communication. This concludes my presentation today. Please feel free to contact me with any questions you have about AVES at the email address below, and I thank you for your time.